Let me, um, thank you, John. So the first speaker is going to be Dr. C. Ahmed from the USDA ARS. Uh, he's going to speak about the introduction, uh, distribution, diagnostic of Fantasma scale. Dr. C, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. Thank you, Henry. Uh, I'm Z Ahmed. I work as a research entomologist at USDA ARS facility in Fort Pierce, Florida. Before we go dive into introduction of uh, Phantasma scale, I want to I want to give a very brief and quick introduction about scale insects. Most of you uh, are familiar with scale insects. Uh, there are two major groups of scale insects, soft scales and armor scales. Before I uh, introduce uh, these two groups, it is important to uh, let you know that there is a sexual dimorphism in scale insects, which means uh, adult females, they look very different from adult males. Adult males, they are winged, they don't feed, and they their only purpose of life is to mate and then they die. And usually you will not find adult males. But most of the time when you're finding scale insects on plants, they will be adult females or immature. So on this slide, there are different uh, adult females of scale insects. You can see they are of different shapes, different colors, and also different sizes. At the bottom, if you can see my mouse, they are uh, soft scales. They are relatively, relatively bigger as compared to armor scales. And on the top, there are armor scales. The major difference between these two is that soft scales, they don't have any protective covering. And armor scales, they have a protective covering. I will, I will explain on next slide what is the protective covering. Phantasma scales, it belongs to group armor scale. So it is very important to know here that uh, phantasma scale is the one which has a protective covering. Here is one example of armor scales, which is false Florida red scale. It was first found in Florida in 2018. If you can see, uh, it has a round protective covering on your left. If you flip this protective covering over, you will see underneath this protective covering, there is the adult female. So in first question, uh, on the first option was Florida red scale, which is very uh, dark reddish in color and round. And I, I noticed there are about 20% people, they thought Florida red scale is phantasma scale. It is very important that, uh, uh, that Phantasma scale is not round, it is elongate. But there, there are about 40% which were right uh, for first question. So uh, this is another example of uh, Levisi, arm, Levisi armor scale, which was first found in Florida in 2013. If you see on your left on, on your screen, this is a protective covering, which is nicely camouflaged with the branch. If you flip this uh, protective covering, you will find purplish body of adult females underneath this protective covering. So now you 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 probably uh, got the idea what protective covering I will, I'm talking about. Let's uh, dive into phantasma scales introduction. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, phantasma scale is armor scale. However, it is not a it is not an unusual armor scale. It is very unusual armor scales, and there is a group. In, within armor scale, that is called papillarial species. Phantasma scales belong to that papillarial species. So the difference between papillarial species and other armor scale is that in case of our, uh, in case of papillarial species, which is phantasma scale, adult females not only just covered with the protective covering, but it is enclosed inside the protective covering. Here you can see, if you can see my mouse, this is adult female of phantasma scale. Again, it is elongate and uh, not round. So if you see on the top, this is a shed skin, which is exuvia of the first instar, which morphs into second instar. And then if you go uh, to your right, this is the second instar, uh, uh, which, which basically morphs into female. And this female resides inside the, inside the shed skin, inside the exuvia of the second instar. And 
Uh, unlike other armor scale, in this case, um, adult female is enclosed inside shed skin of second star. That's why this species in uh, in uh, a species in which phantasm scale belong to, they are called pupillarial species. And this is one of the reason armor scales are challenging. As, uh, armor scales are usually challenging to control, but in within armor scale group, phantasm scale is one of the most challenging because it is it is uh, the female is protected uh, and enclosed inside the shared skin of second in star. So here's a life cycle. Uh, here it will help you to understand um, overall uh, uh, different stages of phantasma scales. I will start with the old adult female, which is a uh, dark, darker, and darker, uh, darker brown. It can change into uh, with the age into reddish color. Uh, first, if you see on the dorsum, this is the dorsal side. If you if you turn it over, you will see under uh, and the ventral side. This is a gravid female. You will find two lay two uh, two rows of eggs. These eggs are inside inside this uh, inside this shed skin. And that shed skin is of second star in which uh, adult females is there and it lays eggs. These eggs, they hatch inside and then the crawlers comes out. And then if you see here, this is a uh, older female which turns into, turns into, its color turns into a uh, dark reddish color. And this, uh, uh, this takes about one to two weeks for eggs to hatch and come out of the adult females. Once. Uh, eggs, eggs are hatch, crawlers comes out, then crawlers goes in two directions. One direction they goes into, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there's a sexual dimorphism. So they goes into uh, a, a second star male, which has a wax at the at the posterior side. You can see this white wax. So I noticed that in the in the uh, in the pretest, uh, most of the people they 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 were wrong uh, i think over 50 percent or 80 percent people were wrong when they were identifying male phantasma scale so male phantasma scale is not oval it's elongate and it has a wax which is which has three ridges on it on its back but uh, the the quick uh, a quick tip here for male is that they are elongate not oval and they have a wax at the posterior side this is a second star and there's the wax and then they they molt into one more stage, and then they uh, they eventually becomes a winged adult male. And then uh, it takes about three to four weeks for them, or in some cases, depending on temperature and also depending on host plants, it takes uh, two months to reach at adult male stage. And then second in star, they they also turns into adult. Ah, uh, sorry, sorry, uh, second in star females which is transparent and then it takes about three uh, three to four weeks then adult uh, second star female turns into new adult female which is also transparent and gets darker with the age and it's uh, the life cycle depending on temperature and host plants takes about uh, about uh, about 60 days and that 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 means there are multiple generation of armor scales which are uh, 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 for phantasma scale in the field, which could be overlapping in Florida, especially in South Florida. So uh, in distribution, phantasma scale was first found in Florida in 2018. And since then it has been uh, detected at least in 11 counties in South Florida. Uh, according to database, uh, DPI database, Mm, uh, most of records which were found uh, in 2023, they were from Miami-Dade County. And these sample, these records could be based on uh, how many people are looking for them and how many people can easily find them. And it seems like highest number of samples which were reported in DPA database were from Miami-Dade County. And there were samples also recorded from East and West Coast uh, and also from, uh, uh, mostly from South Florida. In terms of host plants, it is a polyphagous pest and it has a very broad host range. 77 plant species from 54 genera belonging to 25 host plant families were are already reported as a host of 
uh, Fintagma scale. Palms are its favorite host. There are, there are at least 30 palm species are reported for a host of Fintagma scale. Uh, according to DPI database in 2000, uh, 2023, uh, most records of Fintagma scales, they were from foxtail palm, Christmas, Christmas palm, coconut palms, and areca palm. And between 2018 and 2022, most records were from Canary Island date palm, Senegal date palm, pygmy date palm, foxtail palms, areca palms, and coconut palms. There were other palms are on which phantasma scale was also reported, but I'm just uh, mentioning the names of those palms on which highest number of samples were reported. And again, these samples uh, numbers could be biased based on uh, who was collecting and where they were collecting. So how we can uh, detect phantasma scale in the field? Uh, it's not it's not very hard when infestation is heavy because if if infestation infestation is heavy you can see phantasma scale uh, it gives a whitish um, a whitewash appearance on palm fronts which you can see from the far and here is a close up you can see this whole front is giving a whitewash appearance let's go more close in this uh, in if you see these are leaflets of the of of palm front. Uh, there are there are mm, there are white particles which are which are males and then there are light brown particles which are a little bigger they are females let's go more close here's the close up of you can see inside the leaflet of front there are white dots which are males as i mentioned earlier uh, they are about about uh, they are less than 1 millimeter and then uh, mm, there's a, a, a brown dots which is one one two 1.5 milliliter millimeter they are adult females and then there are tiny dots too which are uh, fasten stars and uh, sacking and star uh, phantasma scale so when infestation is heavy heavy you can identify well you can detect and tentatively tentatively identify in the field uh, for phantasma infestation but when infestation is at early stage, so phantasma mm, scale disperse from one location to another location, either through wind, because the crawlers, they are only mobile stage in the life, in the life cycle of phantasma scale. They, they, they move from one tree to another tree through wind. And also phantasma scale um, disperse through contaminated plant material and also uh, contaminated uh, pruning tools or other other tools which we use in the ornamental landscape. So once crawlers land, it's it basically starts finding crawlers usually live for uh, one to two weeks again depending on temperature and host plants. It crawler goes once it lands on a, a, a new plant or new host, it starts looking for a, a hiding spe hiding spot. Then the the most uh, uh, easiest hiding spot on on palms is the fold. So they go in the leaflet of the fold and they start growing inside. This was a this was a areca palm which was in our reach. So I started, I found a lot of uh, other palms infested around this areca palm. So I was trying to see if we can find infestation on this palm. We vis it was infestation was not visible from the far. So I started opening the leaflet and I found. Uh, it seems like the infestation was there for at least a month or two. Uh, and when I opened the fold, I found um, uh, there were few second in star and second star male and female, and there were early and uh, early uh, young female, gravid female was also inside. Uh, it seems like infestation is growing inside. And that's, a, that's a, one of the main challenges because at early stage infestation is hidden inside the fold on a palm. You cannot see it. And uh, with the passage of time, within a few months, uh, it goes to second, third, and fourth generation. And that's the time uh, crawlers, they could not find space inside and inside the fold, they start coming out and then it, infestation becomes visible. And that that is probably late. It's probably is late for management. So it is important to identify or and detect the phantasma scale at early stage. So uh, that areca palm was in our reach, but there are palms which are not in our reach, like foxtail palm, which are really high. So we are also trying to use 
drone to help to see if we can uh, detect the infestation early infestations using drones because drone they are they can help us to find and detect in the field faster as especially because uh, palms are really tall so if you see on your left this uh, there are there was a row of um, uh, foxtail palms there was one palm which was heavily infested and we wanted to see if drone can help us so we took a visible uh, took a, a, a picture from the um, bird eye view picture and then we know this palm i don't know if you can notice this was the heavily infested this was the this was the picture which taken underneath with the with the drone and you can see the infestation there so um, drones can help us to initially screen the palms but you still have to uh, use at this stage because drones are not well trained. We are training drone to 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 find a difference difference between uh, damage caused by abiotic factor and phantasma scale because a drone can help you to figure out the where wherever damage is there, but that damage could be because of some nutrition deficiency. So uh, we are in the process to train uh, uh, AI software to figure out differences between abiotic damage and phantasma scale damage. If you see on the picture on your right, this was uh, caused by abiotic damage, most probably zinc deficiency, and uh, the necrosis and the yellowing was very uniform. However, in case of phantasma scale at early infestation stage, uh, there are there were necros there were uh, uh, symptoms of necrosis, but necrosis wasn't uniform. These these symptoms can uh, help us to identify and train a drone at this stage to, to detect uh, early infestation in the field. But we are at very early stage. Uh, 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 um, as an, uh, with a human naked eye, we still cannot differentiate from the far whether, uh, whether it's, uh, it's because of phantasma scale, and uh, da damage is because of phantasma scale or abiotic uh, symptoms. I'm talking about at early stage. So um, once we detect uh, either it's an early stage or a late stage, we also need to have a tentative, tentative identification. Um, so it, I will, I will highly recommend that you should involve a specialist because there are closely related species of phantasma scale, which are uh, some of them are in Florida, some of them are not in Florida. There are six species which are closely related to phantasma scale in the U.S. Uh, three of them are in Florida. One of them is a very light, it is only found on citrus. And then one of them is very dark. They, that the dark reddish, which is mostly found on uh, camellias. And then there are two species, Firenia phantasma, which is our phantasma scale. And then there is a Firenia phreni. I noticed that there are there are about 20% uh, people who, 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 uh, who choose uh, Frenia Freni as a phantasma scale in the quiz. So Frenia Freni and phantasma scale, they can, they both can be found on palms. Uh, and high, uh, phantasma scale has a potential to reach at higher infestation as compared to uh, Frenia Freni based on our, based on historical record. So, and also phantasma scale has a broader host range as compared to Frenia Freni E. So it is important to identify uh, correctly which is which which require help from specialists, but in the field tentatively you can identify by uh, by looking at some uh, shape, also uh, color. Yeah, and sometimes colors are uh, colors can be deceiving, but in in, in phantasma scales there is a, a dorsal longitudinal red stripes. Uh, not all all females have, but some females. I found every time have that red stripe, which can help to identify tentatively phantasma scale in the field. It is important to correctly identify because phantasma scale has a broader host range and uh, it has a, has a potential to cause heavy damage uh, in a short period. Here's a field habitat habitus of those closely related species. You can see this is the T scale, which is really dark. And this is our phantasma scale. It ha still has, uh, 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 it's not very visible, but still has a red stripe on dorsum. And this is a probability data, which I mentioned earlier. It is only found, most of the time found on citrus, and it is lighter in color. This is uh, Firenia externa, which is not in Florida. This is mostly found on conifers, uh, Christmas trees. 
uh, it's a little a little more uh, longer as compared to other uh, other species of uh, Fidonia as compared to Phantasma too. So, but it's darker as compared to Phantasma. So, and uh, there are other species, not just armor scale, which are which can also give appearance of Phantasma scale infestation in the field, like coconut mealybug. We have been dealing coconut mealybug in Florida for some time. They are bigger in, as compared to phantasma scale, but still they give a white wash appearance in the field. If you're looking at the palm under, uh, standing uh, standing on a palm underneath, uh, and if you're standing underneath of the palm, if you look up, you will see the white wash appearance. This was in case of, uh, uh, I think it was a mm, pygmy date palm. So I, when I uh, started, uh, when I, I when I saw this infestation of the far, it was looking white wash appearance, which can easily be received as a phantasma scale infestation. When I looked at close up, I saw the males, which are uh, which are which has a white wax, as uh, in case of phantasma scale, they are bigger uh, in in case of coconut mealybugs, and and the females they turn yellow. But it's it's very important uh, to have a close up uh, to confirm whether it's a phantasm scale or coconut mealybug. Another closely, another uh, 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 species which can give appearance of whitewash in the field, which we already know, rugose paneling whitefly, which is very common in South Florida. Uh, if if you're looking at um, looking from the far or looking standing when you're looking under. Standing underneath of the palm, looking up, you'll see the whitewash appearance. That whitewash appearance can easily be deceived uh, with the um, with the infestation of rugose paneling whitefly. Uh, but in case of rugose paneling whitefly, they are adult, which are which have wings, and they if you shake the frond, they will move. Uh, uh, but in case of phantasma scale, they don't move, and they are phantasma scale are a lot smaller as compared to rugose paneling whitefly. So overall summary. Uh, we, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, if infestation is heavy, it, it would be very easy to identify phantasma scale or detect uh, a phantasma scale, but I would still recommend to correctly identify, you need to involve a specialist. So to detect, uh, it, it would be very easy by, by looking at a whitewash appearance on uh, palm fronts. And when you go close up, you will see that white wash appearance are due to uh, males because males, they have this, if you can see these snow particles on a, on a leaflet, these are males. And then when you're looking when you're looking close up, you will also find um, a, a light yellow color elongate, which are female. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, females, early, early, early young females, which are gravid females, they are very light in color. And these red stripes is not very visible. With the passage of time, uh, they, their colors become darker. And uh, uh, before they, right after they lay eggs, there is a, a red stripe on their dorsum, which can help to distinguish Firenia phantasma from other closely related species. Then if you are, but if you are late for one or two weeks, that they, that turns into dark, darkish, uh, uh, darkish reddish appearance, which is, which is, which can be closely related to Firenia firenii, or sometimes it also give appearance of T early uh, young T scale female. Then, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, there's a sexual dimorphism. Males, they look very different from the female. And most importantly, uh, they all, uh, all of these stages, they have protective covering except crawler stage, which is the first and star stage. That stage, depending on temperature and host plant can last two to three weeks. So that's, uh, but there are overlapping, overlapping generation. There could be overlapping generation in the field too, but that uh, crawlers are the most susceptible stage to apply chemical control because uh, they don't have any protective covering. However, if you pass the crawler stage, uh, uh, the efficacy of chemical control will decrease because uh, the second star and adult females, they have protective covering and the males, they don't feed. Uh, and there are references at the end of uh, my, uh, this is on, the, on this last slide for you to read more information. Uh, at the end of this talk, uh, Lance, Dr. Lance Osborne, he will also uh, mention about the website we have at the University of Florida uh, webpage, which can also help you to get more information uh, for Phantasma scale. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Dr. C. Wow, it's just an amazing slide that you have over there. Thanks a lot. We have uh, some questions, but we are going to uh, keep the questions uh, at the end. Uh, I think we are going to have more time for, for the question at the end. All right, so the next speaker is going to be Dr. Ami Rodi from uh, USDA AFIS. Great, let me know when you're all seeing my presentation. Yes. Great. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for this opportunity to share with you a little bit about a study that we did where we looked at the impact of uh, phantasma scale on some poems and the potential impact of natural enemies. So I work.